Hi, my name is Peter Salamos and I'm going to talk about how to scale Shiny apps for Python and R. So what is this Shiny thing? Shiny is a web application framework developed by Posit, previously known as RStudio, and this is a framework where you only need to know R or Python and you can develop a full-fledged web application without an in-depth knowledge of the underlying CSS, HTML or JavaScript languages. So this is really good for data scientists and all kinds of folks and say you mustered Shiny, you really put in the effort to engineer a production great Shiny app and you've received some great feedback from your users and the user interface is really stunning. Now the only thing that remains is to find the hosting and deployment solution and there are actually more than three ways of achieving this goal. There are right now more than 20 options. So why do you need to know all about those 20 options when at the end of the day you are going to need just one? And then if you only need just one, how do you pick the one that best suits your needs? So this is where the hosting data apps website comes into the picture, where once you identify your constraints and requirements, you can go ahead and select a suitable few or the final one that you're going to need to learn more about so you can make an informed decision and learn only what you need if you visit the website and go through the reviews and tutorials you are going to be self-sufficient to make these decisions and then also you'll find tons of resources to do this yourself head over to hosting.analytium.io if you want to learn more about your hosting options and how to self-host your shiny application now, one particular aspect of hosting Shiny apps on your own is scaling. Once there is such a demand for your awesome Shiny application that you need to have more than one instance of the app and do load balancing between these, now this is where things become really tricky. And that's why I decided to record these videos because going through some uh, readme files and and code snippets is not going to cut it because it's a bit complicated and as, as you will see there's a lot to discuss so here is this video tutorial series actually and uh, hope you'll enjoy that so first we just go to shiny.rstudio.com this is the website where you're going to find tons of information if you are not yet a shiny user Otherwise, I want to draw your attention to this banner which says Shiny for Python is in alpha. So let's see what's behind this link. Shiny for Python, there's a caution here that this is currently in alpha and may be unstable. API might change, which is all fine. And uh, we are not here to discuss about how to write Shiny apps in Python or in R but we are more interested in the deployment option. So let's see what, what are the choices for us when it comes to Shiny in Python. I can see the usual suspects, Shiny apps.io, Shiny server open source, and RStudio Connect commercial offering. There are of course other hosting options. So if we go there, the two main complications that you need to think about when you're trying to deploy your apps in other ways. Like these three options take care of the scaling and everything. So it's really just a click away. And you don't need to worry about uh, that ever happening or going wrong. Now, when you're trying to achieve the same thing yourself, they need to be aware that Shiny is using WebSockets uh, to communicate between the front end and the back end. And also Shiny sessions hold reactive state in the memory. And therefore, um, if you have multiple instances of the app, you need to somehow make sure that the same user is always going to end up requesting information from the same server instance, because otherwise, if they upload files or set some settings, then uh, those could be lost. So let's see what's out there. They list Heroku. Hmm. They have documented option for session affinity. However, for reasons we don't yet understand, the test application consistently fails. AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, not a lot to report yet. Pretty sure there's things to come. But this is really 
peculiar that uh, things fail so miserably. So what I decided is to try it myself and, and see if, if this really holds or if there is something that we can do. Let's follow this link to the test application, which is inside RStudio's PyShiny uh, repository within the examples load balance folder. And this is it. It's in Python. We import Shiny, we import Starlet from responses, and then the UI is really just some information and placeholders that we are going to update from the server side. Now, on the server side, we have two main components. One is the dynamic URL that is really just there. It's a uh, session specific. And whenever you hit this URL with a GET request, you're going to get an OK 200 status. And there is also a JavaScript snippet that is being sent to the client side from the server once the uh, server instance is running. So we know the URL from this dynamic endpoint, and this is then becomes hard-coded into the snippet. And so what happens here we ping this endpoint 100 times, and if we end up at a different endpoint, which would indicate we have multiple instances and we are at the wrong spot, then it is going to report to the front end that there is a failure. Failure. Otherwise, we keep hitting the endpoints in progress, and at the end, we conclude that the test is complete. So this is really to it. This is just a test application. Now let's head over to analytium slash shiny load balancing repository in GitHub. You can clone, download this folder. And now we are going to open this up in our editor. As you can see, I'm using VS Code here because I'm going to blend a couple of things here, text files, a command line, and also a simple browser. So let's click on the readme. So we begin with this Heroku quote that it's, it's really not straightforward what to do. So this is our problem statement. We have WebSockets. Now we just need to make sure that the load balancing is happening correctly. And we are going to review what's happening on Heroku, DigitalOcean app platform, fly.io, and what happens when we use Docker Compose. You kind of see the answers already, what worked and what did not, but we are going to do a deep dive and see what is really happening and how you can achieve this. And the way how we test sticky sessions is to use this test application that we just saw before, which is also part of this repository. If you click the load balancing folder app.py, that is going to be the same text file that we just saw a minute ago. So this is the Python version. At the end, you have the UI, the server function, you create the app and serve that. We can build a shiny live version of this, which uh, is not really uh, a wonderful idea when it comes to load balancing, because the whole point of shiny live is that you don't need a server. So there's nothing to load balance uh, to. And uh, it is just here so that if you want to try this in shiny live, you can see that that is really just happening on the client side and, and nothing can go wrong. But just to give you an idea of uh, how this app looks like when it's deployed, maybe this is the quickest way to show it. So this is a simple browser. Now we can see that this is the description attempts, 100 attempts, test complete because nothing has failed. Now if I reload this, then I see again going from 0 to 100 and I can keep hitting the refresh button. Nothing is ever going to change because this is all just in my browser. If you or 100 other users are going to go to the same uh, endpoint on, on GitHub pages and do the same. What happens is the HTML containing the Shiny app is going to download to that browser and there is really nothing 
to load balance because this is just static hosting which is wonderful and this is the future and it's going to arrive to R at some point right now you can enjoy this as an experimental feature for shiny Python now if you go back of course there is an R version which I created based on Joe Cheng's Python example and head over to the load balancing R folder and there is an app.r file maybe you are more familiar with the R version of Shiny so let's just see how this looks in our traditional Shiny format we load Shiny and BSlib the reason why we need BSlib is because version 5 is still not the standard and if we want to look things the same in our Python and R instance then we need Bootstrap 5 this is just the markdown uh, text that is telling us what we are looking at the same card and placeholders and in our server functions we have the dynamic endpoint via ses session register data object and we provide a function which is going to print out some messages so that we can log the same information as the, Py uh, as the Python app is uh, logging and then we provide the response with status 200 and also very important uh, the cache control header is set to no cache so that 100 times we are hitting this endpoint there's no point in caching it because the test is about whether we hit the same endpoint or not and then we render the UI part which is uh, going to be this JavaScript snippet where we hard code the URL from the dynamic endpoint that we just created here and then once it's there then we keep hitting the endpoint using the fetch URL JavaScript function and then evaluate if uh, we are getting back the OK response or not now scrolling back up to the Python version you can see we are going to dockerize this application and the docker file for our shiny app is called dockerfile.lb and feel free to go ahead either building this yourself or just pulling the image I already have them here docker image ls so we are going to need python shiny lb and r shiny lb images so this is how the python version looks like we are using the Python 3.9 base image, set up uh, an app user and group, then install the requirements using pip, copy over the app itself, and run it on port 8080. Compared to this, the R version is slightly different, dockerfile.lb-r, we are using the R2U base image. Install a couple of packages, create user and group, and then copy over the app itself. Set the user to this app and expose port 8080, which is where we are going to run the app. So you can run these lines to build the images yourself or just do a Docker pull using L lithium and the tag I'm not going to repeat that here but everything is contained in the repo so feel free to recreate modify as you wish I'm going to run the Python application so you can copy this instruction yourself docker run we are mapping port 8080 of the host to port 8080 of the container let's copy this here and make a bit more room for all the logs that we are going to create now you can see it's running on HTTP localhost 8080 in our simple browser let's see refresh this page we see the attempts going to 100 test complete and here we see that we have this session endpoint with a hash and we are getting 200 OK responses. So this is what, what we really want. 
and uh, if we have multiple instances of this app then we want to load balance between them and still make sure that the same user always will end up on the same instance so this is how the app works and this is how we are going to see from the back end and from the front end what is really going on so let's shut this off and see what happens if we run the R version the R is running, shine is up same local host and port it is grayed out so let's just reload now we can see the attempts going to 100 and very similar logs that we just created as part of our application going from 0 to 100 So head back to the readme file and now we're going to start our deep dive into Heroku first because this was that original question that grabbed my attention. So if you click on Heroku you are going to see some more instructions and we are going to continue with this one in a bit. So far we have seen a single app instance when a single user is connecting to this app then really there is nothing to worry about. However, when you have more than one users, the user count can still keep increasing and you still have the same app instance, in which case they are going to have their own sessions and eventually you're going to run out of CPU or memory if these users tend to use the app all at the same time. And this is where load balancing comes in, which means you have multiple instances of the application either on the same server or having multiple servers in a cluster. Now user one might be directed to instance number one and so on. So what happens when, for example, this user happens to work from a coffee shop with a not so great internet connection. But in that case, when he for some reason needs to refresh the page, next time he might be directed to an instance number two and in case he has uploaded files previously or, or uh, saved some settings those could be lost and this is not always ideal so if your app depends on uh, some functionality where serving uh, preserving state is really important keep that in mind and in this case not every kind of load balancing is going to work for you because round robin means it is always going around so whatever comes next that's where the next response is going to get served if session affinity is really important to you in this case which means the same user needs to end up in the same instance they need to set this at the load balancer level due to some mechanism like a cookie setting or hashing the IP address the server will know which user is connecting again and it is going to direct that to the same uh, instance so user number one goes to instance number one user number two goes to instance number two and so on so this is what we are going to try to achieve with Heroku the digital ocean app platform fly.io and uh, docker compose and see how we can achieve this type of uh, load balancing so here we are and trying to have a look at Heroku and how to run multiple instances of a shiny app with proper load balancing between those instances. So let's open up our project again, which is on GitHub in analytium slash shiny load balancing repository and in the readme you see the list of options first one is Heroku click on that and you'll see some more detailed instructions about how to deploy your app and then how to scale that what we are going to need for this one is this Heroku.yaml file which is going to tell the Heroku CLI that we are going to use this docker file to build the image and also optionally you can specify the command that it should run at the end and you see port is provided as an environment variable this is how Heroku expects us to do this so let's go back here 
First thing is to install the Heroku CLI. Once you have that handy, then now we can type Heroku login. You're going to get prompted to go and sign on, which opens up a browser. I've already logged in, but this is the case when you will be prompted to provide your login credentials. Now, with this all done, you can go to your uh, dashboard and see that it's empty, or yours might not be empty, but mine is. And back to VS Code. So let's just Heroku create dash a python shiny which is going to be the name of our application and what this does is uh, it registers the app and also adds Heroku as one of its remotes git remote dash v is going to list github and Heroku as our remotes so what we need to do then, because we are going to use this uh, Docker file, we need to set the stack to container. So we use Heroku stack colon set. So the next thing we can do is uh, do a git push to the Heroku remote. And as we do that, it is going to build the Docker image it is going to get pushed to the container registry hosted by Heroku. Let's just go back to our dashboard, refresh and see. Now we have a Python shiny app and build is in progress. Kind of see the same thing happening how we are building the app. Now you see pip is installing dependencies, setting the user, pushing the layers. It is now done. So let's head back to our command line. So if we print Heroku info, we'll see that we are using the container stack. We have a URL with a HTTPS. We are using one web dynos and dyno is just a shorthand for a kind of a virtual server that we are going to get assigned. And this is a free tier dyno, which as you see, starting at November 28th, free dynos are going to get deprecated. And I've noticed some sluggishness with the free dyno. So for scaling, we are going to need to upgrade. So let's do it now and also set this HTTP session affinity feature, which is what's going to allow us to scale up to two or three more dynos and I have the sticky sessions enabled. It is done. And now for scaling to work and also for our apps to not be so sluggish as under the free tier, let's just upgrade to standard 1x, which is the minimum dyno type for uh, scaling your shiny uh, web apps. You can see now it's standard 1x. So before we scale, let's just see if one instance is, is actually doing the job. So let's head back to the browser. And in the browser now we can go and see some of the logs. We see that the Python app with the Shiny is uh, up and ready to accept connections. So now if you click on this open app, it is going to take you to this HTTPS column slash slash Python shiny Heroku app.com and you see this test is 
going well. Soon we'll hit 100. Hopefully with no errors. And there you go, test complete. Now if we go back and check the logs, we're going to see that we got all those 200 responses as we've seen before. So this is when we have one app instance. To be able to scale up, we can type Herku PS scale web equals two, which is going to create two instances of our application. Using standard 1x, now we have two instances running. And now we can see web number two is up and running, which is nice. That's a confirmation that we have our deployment waiting for us. Go to the same URL and voila, this is going well. It's 100 test complete. Now if we go back, we see all those responses. So one thing we can do to test that this is not just something random. So go back to our command line and let's disable session affinity and see if the same thing will hold. For this, we use this Herco features column disable. It's done. Go back to browser. Now, this endpoint failed after three attempts. Another one after one attempt. Let's see the logs. 404 not found. So this dynamic endpoint is not found, which means now we are going from web two to web one, and this is really not working. We can keep trying, it is going to fail. So what we can conclude here is that the setting that we had before for session affinity is doing what it's supposed to do. And the reason why it did not work before, according to this quote, I don't know what the stack was. Maybe it was a, a Python stack that they were trying to use. It looks like a container stack is useful in this regard and you can achieve session affinity on Heroku. One thing, because now I'm being charged for this, is to destroy the application, which is something you can do with apps colon destroy. And I'm going to confirm that this is the app I'm going to destroy so that the command line is not asking me. If you want to do the same for the R version, this is what you need to do in the heroku.yaml file. If you change this, the docker file with the R application inside, then you're going to be able to deploy the Shiny app using R to Heroku. Really, the message is going to be the same. If you set session affinity right and you have the right types of dynos, then you're going to achieve this goal. You can scale up and down. However, if you disable this session affinity feature, the test is going to fail. I'm not going to repeat that with R, but feel free to go ahead and try it out.